All right, so I will talk about Markov models. These are basically Bayesian networks that model dependencies over time, so things that change over time. So let's say um, we have a model of the world with hidden states. So this is how it goes. I'm observing a dog. The dog can be hungry, happy, or sleepy. Now, I'm not a telepath to know how the dog is feeling. However, I can observe the dog's behavior. So the hidden states are the states that the dog is in, whether it's hungry, happy, or sleepy. But I don't know how the dog is feeling. However, I can observe the dog's behavior. Okay? So, how do I model this? Well, I can have states of the dog, right? So the dog can be hungry, happy, or sleepy. I know that those are the only states the dogs are in my world. Um, we will denote a state as x uh, super i. For example, x of 2 is happy, right? So this is the second state, the second x, right? x1 would be hungry and x3 would be sleepy. Now, there's also observations. I can see that the dog is restless, restless, growling, growling, or uh, wagging the tail, okay? Now, you see that I have three uh, states and three observations. They don't need to match, okay? I can have many more observations than states, okay? But just for this example, it, they happen to be three. Now, we denote an observation as O super K, meaning, for example, if K is 3, then, it, then the state is wagging the tail, right? Or wax tail, as I abbreviated here. So these are my states and my observations in my model. I'm trying to make a model of the world. Now, from my experience, if I saw the dog in state in, some, in a given state an hour ago, we'll call that time T minus 1, We'll say that right now is time t. So in time t minus 1, so an hour ago, for example, I will know the probability of being in state x sub j, so in the next state. Basically, if I saw the dog in a given state xi an hour ago, there might be a probability of being of being in state xj. So for example, if I saw the dog hungry an hour ago, there might be a probability that from being hungry an hour ago, now the dog is uh, happy. Right? There's, there's that probability. I'm going to call that probability a transition probability A super IJ, meaning the transition from state I to state J in a time period. And the transition from state I to J in terms of probabilistic notation is going to be the probability of a time, time, a time slice T being in state J given that at time slice T minus 1 it was the dog was in state I. Okay, so the transition from happy to hungry is the probability of being of being happy in time t while it was hungry at time t minus one. Given that it was hungry at time t minus one, this is what we will call a transition probability, changing from one state to another in a time slice. Also, from my experience with dogs, I can infer the probability that I observe a behavior. O super k when the dog is in state x of x super j. So for example, I know what the probability is of, of observing the dog wagging the tail when it's happy, right? I will call that an emission probability, A of j k. So emission of, oops, the emission probability of the state j with behavior k. And that in probabilistic notation is the probability but I see that the dog exhibits behavior k given that it's in state j. So the probability that the dog is, hap is uh, wagging the tail given that it's happy, what's that probability, right? The probability that, say, the dog is hungry given that it wags the tail, perhaps the probability is going to be lower, right? But that's the emission probability. So we have states, observations, transitions, and emissions. Okay, that's the language. And now I can, with all those variables together, and knowing these probabilities, okay, I can model the world of the dog, right? So the dog can be hungry, happy, or sleepy. Uh, if the dog is hungry, there's a 40% chance that it's restless, there's a 40% chance that it growls, and there's a really uh, small percentage, um, small chance that he actually walks the tail. This is the conditional probability. So 
the dog will show restless behavior given that it's hungry 40% of the time. That's how you read this. Now, in terms of transitions, from being hungry in time step t minus 1 to being hungry now in time step t, there's a 40% chance. There's a 30% chance, for example, that the dog is going to be happy after being hungry. There's a 20% chance that the dog is going to be sleepy after being happy. Now, if you look at this arrow, there's a 30% chance that the dog will be happy given that it was sleepy in the previous time step. So we have our emission probabilities here and our transition probabilities on the arrows. Okay? So like it says here, the dog's behavior depends on its state. Right? The dog behavior depends on its state, so the probability, the emission probability. And its state at time t depends on its previous state at time t minus 1. And this is going to be key. The state that the, do that the dog is in, I'm not going to make it depend on you know, many previous states. I'm just going to make it depend on, on you know, whatever was the previous state, period. Right? I don't care if three time steps ago or three hours ago the dog was hungry. I care that if it's now sleepy, what was the probability of it being sleepy will depend on what was the state the previous time. Now remember, I don't I know what these states are, but I don't know the states that the dog is in. So let's do some assumptions, right? Because their probabilities, the transition probabilities, so the transition probabilities to state J, okay given whatever happened in, in the previous time step, they will all add up to 1. So the probability that, that, that the dog is happy given that he was sleepy, plus the probability that he was um, hungry given that he was sleepy, plus the probability that it's sleepy now given that he was sleepy in the past, if I add all those probabilities, they should add up to 1. The same thing with the emissions. Okay, The probability of all the possible observations, so, um, so basically, um, restless growling and wagging the tail, right? So what's the probability of the dog being restless given that it's sleepy? What's the probability that the dog is growling given that it's sleepy and the probability that it wags the tail given that it's sleepy? If I add all those probabilities, they should add up to one, okay? So just, just to make it clear, so it's probabilistic. Now, this whole thing that I wrote here with, with this figure, right? It respects these two rules. And also, I could express it in tables. So, the transition probability. So, if the dog is, or the dog was, and is. So, this is past up here, and the columns is past, and in the rows is future, or now. Another way of saying is, this is present, and this is future. This is one st time step ahead of the columns here. That's how I decide to, to represent this. So, if the dog is hungry, the dog will be hungry again with 0 0.4 uh, probability. If the dog is happy, the dog will be sleepy with 0 0.2 probability. Okay? So this is how I represent these probabilities. And it's the same as the graph. You can uh, uh, rewind a little bit and you'll see that it's, that it's the same. So from hungry to hungry, it's 0 0.4. From hungry to hungry is 0 0.4. So we see the same probabilities. Now, the, tr the emission probabilities, if the dog is in whatever state, it will act with or it'll show whatever behavior. So if the dog is hungry, it will be restless with a 0.4% chance. If the dog is happy, it will be growling with a 0.01% probability. Again, it's the same here. If the dog is happy, it will growl with a 0.01% probability. This just makes it easier to see for all our computations. So that is my model of the world. Okay. Now, here's the question, though. Again, I have seen how the dog behaves, but I don't know what the what what state it is in. How do I model that? Well, I'll model it as a Bayesian network, like so. It's dynamic Bayesian network, and I know that the observations depend only on the state of the dog. Okay, so I will say, okay, for time step one, for state number one at time one, I observed behavior, that behavior. At time two, well, 
time, uh, the state at time 2 depends on the state at time 1, so that's what the arrow is. And then the observation at time 2 only depends on the state at time 2. And I can do that for however many observations I have. Okay? So the sub indices represent time slices. The, uh, x, x given a time slice can be happy, hungry, or sleepy. And the observations can be restless, white tails, or growls in my example. Okay? Now, that's how I'm going to represent it. And the thing is now, this follows a lot of the, you know, all the, all the Bayesian network uh, rules. And it has some properties. So after I make some observations, I can compute because I have this Bayesian network and I know all the transition probabilities from one state to the other and all the emission probabilities from one state to a behavior, right? Just like a neural network, I can know three important things with HMMs, with hidden Markov model. I can compute the most likely state after a sequence of observations. So, for example, I have observed the dog being, you know, uh, restless, then it was restless again, and then it was sleepy. Well, what state is it in? What, what's the dog feeling, right? I can find that out. The second thing that I can find out is I can work out the most probable sequence of states given the observation. So, for example, I have observed the dog being restless, wagging the tail, restless again, and then wagging the tail. What were the states in which the dog was in? Okay, so not only the, the, the most likely state now, but where were the states so far of the dog? And given several sets of observations, so many dogs, for example, I can refine my Markov model and my probabilities and adapt it to the actual real behavior of the dog, right? So I can refine my machinery here, my model. Okay, now this example has a dog, right, with some hidden, hidden state. You can think of consumers, right, reacting to something and you know whether they want, you know, they're angry, they dislike the product, they, you can translate, you can extrapolate this to many other behavior, to many other examples in which we know the behaviors, but we don't know the internal states, but we want to know those internal states because that, that helps us refine our products. Okay, so over time, if we model those behaviors and states over time, then it's a hidden Markov model. All right. First, predicting a state after an observation. So if I observe the dog wagging its tail at time t, and I know the dog was hungry at time t minus 1, what state is the dog in now? Okay, so it's wagging the tail, and I know that it was hungry at time t minus 1. What state is the dog in? Okay, well, so we know that the observation at time t, the behavior at time t, is wagging tail. We know that the previous state, the state at t minus 1, was hungry. What is the current state? Okay, so the way to compute this is I need to compute the argmax, right, of, so basically, what will produce, what value for x, for a state, will produce the maximum probability in the probability of wagging tail giving the state that is in now and the previous state. Now, this, this is what argmax means. Argmax basically means, you know, what x here will be the, the one that results in the biggest number for this probability. So again, the argmax given the x's this probability here is the probability that the observation is wagging tail at time t that given the current state which i don't know what it is i need to find out and given that previously it was hungry so i'm just rewriting this this equation uh above there now using bayes okay uh bayes theory this probability here we can decompose it in two probabilities right by what's called the chain rule. We can decompose in the probability of, uh, uh, and, um, and also using Bayesian networks is the same, it works out the same. We, we know that the observation at time t only depends on the state at time t. So we'll have that probability there, the probability of observing behavior k, which is whack the tail, given the state at time t. Okay, and we know that the state at time t depends on the previous state. 
So we know that this is the probability of the state at time t given that at time t minus 1 the dog was hungry. So this probability of observing a behavior giving the state and the previous state becomes then the probability of observing the behavior given the previous behavior times observing times uh, uh, I'm sorry the probability of being in state X given that you were in state uh, hungry before times the probability of observing wagging tail with whatever state you think we're on now. In Bayesian networks this is also done by um, by a rule that says all variables depend on their parents. Okay, so um, you can you can see that the parent of the state is hungry and the parent of the observation is the state. The parent of the state is the, state, the previous state and the parent of the observation is the state, the actual state. Anyways, so what we do is these are transition probabilities and these are emission probabilities. So we plug in values for x, hungry, happy, and sleepy, and we see which one produces a higher number here. Okay, for example, if you uh, produce, if you say, for example, uh, let's try hungry, you will see what's the probability of hungry given hungry times the probability of wagging tail given hungry. Remember, what's the probability of hungry given hungry times the probability of wagtail given hungry? And you can get both those probabilities from here. The probability of hungry given hungry is 0 0.4, and the probability of wagging tail given hungry is 0 0.2. You multiply those two, you get the probability that uh, you get the probability that the current state is hungry. Now, you do the same thing for happy and for sleepy. And the biggest probability, that is the xi that you pick. Okay? So that's how you can predict what state the dog is in if you have all these tables, all these probabilities that you've collected via experience. So we know how to compute the probability of a current observation given the previous observation and the current state. But here's the thing. At some point, I'm going to say, OK, what's the probability that, do that the dog is hungry? And I don't, you know, what's the probability that the dog is hungry if I see that it's wagging the tail? And at some point, my previous timestamp is just zero. It's like I have no data to start with. OK, so I, in my network, in my Bayesian network, I will be at this point, OK, where I have, an uh, I have a state that I want to find out. I have an observation, but I don't have any previous data. So in order to address the problem, you can assign, from your experience, pro initial probabilities for the state. So for example, from my experience, I see that dogs are hungry 30% of the time. They're happy 40% of the time, and they're sleepy 30% of the time. This is what I'm going to call initial probabilities. Okay. Now, a little uh, reminder of probability laws here. The probability of, an op of observations is the same as the probability of all the states during those observations. Right? That doesn't change anything. I'm just adding the states. Now, when I add a variable here, okay. I need to go for all possible states, and this probability becomes this one, becomes the conditional probability of the observations given the states times the probability of the states. Okay, This is going to help us later on, but this is basically the chain uh, rule. Now, I'm sorry, this is uh, conditioning, a probability distribution. Now, if I have a bunch of states, and observations, and that is this probability here, which we just saw from the previous slide. Now we know that the probability of all the states is basically the probability of each state given the previous state, right? Basically, the, the emissions, right? So we know that the probability of all the states is the product of the emissions. And the probabilities of observing something giving a state, this part here, right? is basically the multiplication of all possible observations given given a, a state given the set of given the, the the current state for that observation which is the emissions right so this part here becomes the emission probabilities and this part here becomes 
the transition probabilities. And we know that the probability of having a number of st states given some value and the corresponding observations is the sum from one to all possible states that you've seen, the number of states or the number of observations or states that you've seen, the product of the emissions and transitions at any at all the times for each one of these observations. So let's look at this. The probability of my model with R possible combinations and T possible time slices is this. This is what's called the, the, the this is the probability distribution. Okay, it's not the probability that observation X is whatever, right? It's just the distribution. Now for n hidden states, in t time slices, the computation is of the order of n to the t times t. Okay? That is super long. However, let's look at this. Let's say that we're going to have an alpha, you can name whatever you want, alpha i, which is the alpha of a state at timestamp t, is going to be the probability of that state given all the observations including the one of that state, all the previous observations plus the one on that state. Okay, I'm going to define this variable. This is going to help us reduce the computation time here, which is huge. This is going to help us reduce that computation time. Now, the probability of being in state xi at times like t with a history of observations of 1 to t, okay, so 01, 02, 03, 04, all the way to OT, right, will be this one. We know that alpha i of t is the probability of the state being in state i at timestamp uh, t, at time st slice t, given all the previous observations up to time t, right? This is basically, this is basically, now, I haven't added the previous state, right? So this state here depends on the previous state. So if I add that state, okay, remember here I was marginalizing that state. Now I have to put it back in, which is an operation in probabilities that goes like this. If you want to put the previous state or any variable back in, in this case the previous state here, okay, whoops, if you want to put this previous state, you have to sum over all possible values for that previous state. That's why we put a sigma over all possible j's for this state. Okay, So this probability, by simply laws of probability, uh, conditional probabilities, if we add another variable, becomes this. Now, this is just a summation. It's, if you're programming, this is a for loop accumulating these probabilities. Now, we can use what's called the chain rule, okay, which will help us divide this probability into chunks. So we're going to start from the back, from the very back, which has an O sub T. Remember, this is O1, O2, O3, O4, all the way to OT, right? So this probability is the probability of OT given all the other probabilities, all the, all the other variables. So it's the probability of OT given the state, the previous state, and all the, all the observations up to T minus 1, okay? Times, and then we look at this part here for a chain rule, okay? but we're going to chain it from, from xt. So times the probability of xt given xt minus 1 given all the observations. So the probability of xt, xi t at times that lies t given the previous state and all the other observations up to time t minus 1. And then the probability of this. Okay, that's the chain rule. You can, you can continue doing conditioning on this one, but it has no but it served no purpose for what I'm going to, um, what I'm, where I'm going to get at. Okay. Now here, the important thing to notice is the following: the probability of an observation given the state on the previous state and all the observations, right? Well, it so happens that the observation only depends on this state. It doesn't depend on the other variables. It's, it's conditionally independent of these other variables. So we can just write it like this. The probability of a state given the previous state and all the other observations, again, the state only depends on the previous state, remember the graph. So all these other observations are irrelevant for my computation, so I only need this. And then the probability of 
being in state j at time t minus 1, given all my observations up to t minus 1, is basically this alpha variable that I made up of state j at slot time slice t minus 1. Therefore, the alpha of a state of what I, of some state at time slice t is basically the probability of the observation of the state at time at time slice t, right, of a given state at time slice t, times the summation of the transition probabilities, the transition probability for that state, given the previous alpha, the alpha of j at timestamp t minus 1. This is going to be really important, and then we have alpha of i sub 0 is going to be the initial probability for that state. If we run it like this, because we will be storing these previous values, the computation time is just n squared times t, and it's super simple. And this can be represented in a trellis, so I'm going to do a little exercise with that to exemplify this. Again, this is a lot of math. Why is this not in the summation anymore? Because none of these terms uses j, so we can just factor them out. So let's see how this works more intuitively in a trellis. Suppose I observed the dog during three hours. The behaviors at every hour were wagging the tail at one, restless at time two, and wags tail at time three. So the questions that I'm going to ask are, what is the most likely state the dog can be in? And then the next question I'm going to ask is, what is the probability distribution of the states the dog can be in? I want to know what's the probability of it being happy, it being sad, and it being um, hungry. And I, I'm also going to ask, well, what is the most likely state that the dog is in? So let's do time slice 1. The observation at time t1 with, was wagging the tail, right? So. I know my initial probabilities for alpha of sleepy at time slice 0, alpha of happy at time slice 0, and alpha of hungry at time slice 0. These are the states. So what is the alpha of sleepy at time slice 1? Okay. Well, that's going to be the probability of wagtail given sleepy times the probability of sleepy given sleepy times the probability of the previous alpha of sleepy. This is the uh, emission probability times the transition probability for that state times the previous alpha. I do the same thing and it's the same it's the same emission probability times that new transition probability with this time with happy times the alpha of the alpha zero of happy, right? So I get all these probabilities and I add them together and that's my alpha of S1. Again, here's the computation. My emission probability times the sum of all the transition probabilities multiplied by all the, all the possible transition probability from all possible j's, from all possible previous states to the current one, times the previous alpha for the previous states. This is what I'm doing here. You can, again, look at this, this equation, keep it in your mind, write it on a paper, and see that this is what I'm doing here. So I get an alpha for sleepy one. The same thing I'm going to do for sleepy 2, and the same thing for, uh, for, I mean for alpha for happy 1, and the same thing for alpha for hungry 1. Now with a time step 2, I know that the, that the behavior is restless, okay? So basically it works the same, uh, it works the same way, right? So you compute, given these previous alphas, the alpha state 2 for happy, for sleepy, and for hungry at, steps at time step 2. And you do the third time step and you will determine the one that's bigger, that's the most likely alpha. Okay? Now some interesting questions that you will uh, might want to address. Well, how do the probabilities change at T2 versus T1 and T3 and why, right? And you will see that Perhaps the probability of being happy because it was wagging the tail starts to diminish as the dog is now growling or restless, and then they go up again as the dog wags the tail again. Okay. If the predictions don't match my, my intuitions, what potential reasons are there? Well, I think that for one, it's possible that I get my probabilities wrong, and we'll see how to refine that uh, later on this lesson. So.
this whole trellis thing gave uh, gave the idea for the Viterbi algorithm. The goal is, given some observations, say restless wagtail, wagtail, and growl, what is the most likely sequence of states this time? So we will do the same thing at the trellis, right? But at each time step here, we're going to maintain which was the maximum here, which was the most likely here, and which was the most likely here, and we're going to draft that path for the most likely states. That is basically what we're going to do. And in terms of algorithms, you say if aij is the transition probability from state i to j, and pi sub i is the initial probability of being in state i, and s is the set of possible states, we have a little algorithm to do this trellis, okay, and keep the maximum. The algorithm first initializes for all possible behaviors at time sum 1 or 0, depending on where you start from. Just put the, pro the emission probabilities of observation 1, I'm sorry, at time sum 1. Initialize all the v of 1 with all possible behaviors as the emission probabilities for that behavior with their initial times their initial probabilities of that behavior. Now then for each time t, you're going to loop through every state k and you're going to compute a, a v, Viterbi, of uh, a number of t comma k. And that's going to be the maximum probability, the maximum number that results from this, probabil from this probability, okay, for all the values of the state i in the possible states. So you're going to compute the emission probabilities times the transition probabilities times the previous, the previous Viterbi uh, constant, which is the alpha that we used earlier, right? So you will be computing this and you will keep the maximum value and also remember the R max is what was the i that resulted in this maximum value. You're going to keep it in a back pointer, uh, a back pointer table or dictionary or array or whatever you want to call this. Because you're going to be using the previous Viterbi here, that's why you always want to store them. This is called dynamic programming. So thus, the v of t comma k contains the maximum probability of being in state k at timestamp t, the maximum alpha. And bp of t k contains the state, the back pointer, contain, contains the state that had the maximum probability at timestamp t. So what happens, this is called bp because it's a back pointer. Then you can go from the last time slice all the way back to what was the, what was the maximum at time t with behavior k and so on and so forth, you can backtrack and find out what was the prob probable sequence of states. Now, there is a way to refine my model to, uh, to use something like uh, estimation maximization algorithm called the Baum-Welch or forward-backward algorithm to refine my probability. So if my model is not very precise, I can always use the same model to refine it. This, I will not cover this in these slides, um, but now you know what uh, Markov models are and how to compute two of the main questions that can be answered with them, which are what are the observations, what, what are the possible states, the most likely states given the set of observations, and also what is the, mo like, the most likely state now given an observation.